What we do here is go back, 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 back. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Melo. I thought it would be fun to revisit some of the biggest scandals of the early 2000s. Now, as I was only eight or nine around the time a lot of this stuff happened, I still remember hearing about it, and I remember seeing all the magazines in the store. I'm calling it now, but a lot of these celebrities, they would not have survived social media in these times. When I tell y'all they was out here wilding in these streets, these celebrities were off the chain. Coming in hot, we have Britney Spears shaving her head. After not getting to see the boys for weeks, completely beside myself with grief, I went to plead to see them. Kevin wouldn't let me in. I imagined them not knowing where their mother was, wondering why she didn't want to be with them. I didn't know what to do. The paparazzi watched it all happen. I can't describe the humiliation I felt. I was cornered. I was out being chased like always by these men waiting for me to do something they could photograph. And so that night, I gave them some material. I went into a hair salon and I took the clippers and I shaved off all my hair. Everyone thought it was hilarious. Look how crazy she is. Even my parents acted embarrassed by me, but nobody seemed to understand that I was simply out of my mind with grief. My children had been taken away from me. With my head shaved, everyone was scared of me, even my mom. No one would talk to me anymore because I was too ugly. My long hair was a big part of what people liked. I knew that. I knew a lot of guys thought long hair was hot. Shaving my head was a way of saying to the world, fuck you. You want me to be pretty for you? Fuck you. You want me to be good for you? Fuck you. You want me to be your dream girl? Fuck you. I'd been the good girl for years. I'd smiled politely while TV show hosts leered at my breasts, while American parents said I was destroying their children by wearing a crop top, while executives patted my hand condescendingly and second-guessed my career choices even though I'd sold millions of records and I was tired of it. Now looking back, I completely get it, Brittany. The way life is kicking my ass right now, I'll be wanting to shave off my hair and just say, fuck it. Now that incident would also go on and spawn the infamous video of that guy defending Brittany with every fiber of his being. And how fucking dare anyone out there make fun of Brittany after all she's been through. She lost her aunt. She went through a divorce. She had two fucking kids. Her husband turned out to be a user, a cheater, and now she's going through a custody battle. All you people care about is readers and making money off of her. She's a human! What you don't realize is that Britney's making you all this money and all you do is write a bunch of crap about her. She hasn't performed on stage in years. Her song is called Give Me More for a Reason because all you people want is more, 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 more! Leave her alone! You're lucky she even performed for you bastards! Leave Benny alone! Please! I mean, we all laughed at the time, but looking back, he was so right. Brittany was going through so much that we just didn't know or didn't even understand at the time. Now, a year later in 2008, she would be placed under a conservatorship and her father pretty much had control over every aspect in her life. It says on February 1st, 2008, American musician Britney Spears was involuntarily placed under conservatorship by Judge Goaz with her father, Jamie Spears, and attorney Andrew Wallet as conservators. The conservatorship lasted until November 2021. It goes on to say the management of the conservatorship by Jamie and Spears' former business manager, M. Taylor, among other parties, generated controversy almost immediately. While Spears was held on an involuntary psychiatric hold in early 2008 for alleged mental health concerns, there was initially a temporary conservatorship intended to last only days. I mean, that's 13 years of someone being able to dictate your every move. In fact, Homegirl has only been free for about three years and she has been cutting up on Instagram with her dancing videos. I love it! Do 
Work it, girl. Don't you stop. That damn dog is like, Lord, please help me. What is she really doing? Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all can't fuck with Brittany. I'm telling y'all. Is that ass shake for me? Do it, little booty. Look, Brittany is a fool for that, but I'm telling y'all, I get it. No one really understands all she had to go through while constantly being ridiculed in the media. So whatever joy and happiness she does find, look, I'm here for it. And we have to remember, Brittany is still finding her independence after being controlled for so long. So, you know, there's bound to be ups and downs along the way. The way I see it, you get one life to live in. You gotta live it to the fullest. Now, personally speaking, I would love to see her put some pants on and stop dancing in them damn panties. But hey, more power to you. I'm wishing you well, Brittany, and I'm sending you some love your way. Look, keep on twirling on them. I'm still here. I'm still here, and I'm still fabulous. Well, you better preach now. Right? Fabulous. Gone with the wind, fabulous. Okay? Thank you. Well, all right, man. Up next, we have Mel Gibson, and when I tell y'all this man is batshit crazy, this man ain't nothing to play with. While I was gathering clips for this video, I was sitting there listening to these tapes in utter disbelief. Now, I don't know how it all started, but I know one thing. If you're with him, you better be sucking some dick, because if not, he finna lose all his marbles. Y'all go ahead and check this out. You look like a fucking bitch on heat, and if you get ripped by a pack of n****s, it'll be your fault, all right? Because you provoked it, you are provocatively dressed all the time with your fake boobs you feel you have to show off in tight outfits and tight pants and stuff. You see your p from behind. And that green thing today was enough. That's provocative. Listen to my fucking ranting. Listen to what you do to me. I didn't do anything to you. Pain in the ass. You are ruining my life. You make my life so fucking difficult. Well, you know what? It's you a be a woman that fucking supports me instead of a woman that sucks off me. And just fucking sucks me dry. And wants, and wants. Get out of this relationship if you're a good woman and you love me. What? I don't believe you anymore. What am I? What did you just Get say? Get your bullshit. You make me want to smoke. You fuck my day up. You care about yourself. You're so when selfish. When I've been so fucking good to you, you I didn't do anything. I did not do anything. This is your selfish imagination. That's all. You should just fucking smile and blow me. Because I deserve it. I'm blaming you. You went to sleep. I don't blame you. I deserve to be blown. You went <laughs> you went to sleep and didn't blow me. I just had to be blown. This, this guy's the best. Oh, my oh, God. Holy fuck, he did not just say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is amazing. This is the hey, Each fucking tank gets <laughs> better. You're a pain in the ass. You're a pain in my ass. <laughs> Again. I don't know. <laughs> it's almost as if someone is sitting there going, I bet you won't. <laughs> right. <laughs> I bet you now, that was Mel Gibson's rant against his ex-girlfriend. And all I'm doing is sitting here thinking like, what in the hell makes a man go off the deep end like that? The panting, the raving, the screams. That man was furious and he was gonna make sure his ex felt it. Now, in one of the videos that alleges that he called his partner a bitch and a whore before warning her, I'm gonna come and burn the fucking house down, but you will blow me first. He apparently describes her as a psycho cunt and a fucking fake. But it was an outburst which feature a racial epithet that has inspired the most controversy. You look like a fucking pig in heat, he allegedly told his ex who was 40. If you get a pack of N-words, it will be your fault. I mean, everybody caught a stray in his rant and nobody was safe. Now, Mel strikes me as one of those freaky dicky guys who do not play when it comes to getting down in the bedroom. And for some reason, this is all I was thinking about while listening to the tapes of them too. Do it, do it, come on, do it, do it, do it. Oh, 
yes! Yes! Ah, oh, you bitch! Ah! Now, the crazy part is he ain't the only white man that went off the deep end and left a good old nasty voicemail. Alec Baldwin also went off on his 11-year-old daughter at the time. And yes, you heard that right. The poor baby was only 11. I want to tell you something, okay? And I want to leave a message for you right now. Because again, it's 1030 here in New York on a Wednesday. And once again, I made an ass of myself trying to get you a phone to call you at a specific time. When the time comes for me to make the phone call, I stop whatever I'm doing, and I go and I make that phone call at 11 o'clock in the morning in New York, and if you don't pick up the phone, at 10 o'clock at night, and you don't even have that goddamn phone turned on. I want you to know something, okay? Uh, I'm tired of playing this game with you. I'm leaving this message with you to tell you, you have insulted me for the last time. You have insulted me. You don't have the brains or the decency as a human being. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old or 11 years old or that you're a child or that your mother is a thoughtless pain in the ass who doesn't care about what you do. I'm going to let you know just how disappointed in you I am and how angry I am with you that you've done this to me again. You've made me feel like shit and you've made me feel like a fool over and over and over again again. And this crap you pull on me with this goddamn phone situation that you would never dream of doing to your mother. And you do it to me constantly and over and over again. I am going to get on a plane and I'm going to come out there for the day and I'm going to straighten your ass out when I see you. Do you understand me? I'm going to really make sure you get it. Then I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to come home. So you better be ready Friday, the 20th, to meet with me. So I'm going to let you know just how I feel about what a rude little pig you really are. You are a rude, thoughtless little pig, okay? Now, I don't know about y'all, but you got one time to call me a thoughtless little piggy. And from there, we're going to have some problems. Now, what made this even funnier is that I looked up what she looked like at the time, and when I told y'all, I was just over here cracking up laughing. Like, what crosses your mind to call your own daughter a thoughtless pig? I can laugh at it now because she's an adult, but I honestly probably wouldn't find it funny if she was still a child. Look, y'all gonna learn to stop leaving these voice modes when y'all upset at people. Closing out this list, we have a man who stands on business at all costs. Another one who's batshit crazy, but still stands on business nonetheless. We have the infamous Kanye West and Taylor Swift video. Yo, Taylor. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. Look, they don't make award shows like they used to, do they? Kanye got up on that stage and told Taylor Swift to run that mic. Hey! Oh, kick! Uh -huh. Yo, that jacket is tight! Now run that shit, bitch! Yummy! And I mean, looking back, did he lie? Did he lie? No, he did not. But it wasn't the time or place, and that will go on to spark an endless rivalry between Kanye West and Taylor Swift. And to this day, they still have it out for each other. Celebrities were cutting up back in the day, and there's still so many more scandals to cover that we just touched the surface. Now, this is pretty much the early 2000s summed up in one video. Oh my god, are they okay? You got a cigarette and a goddamn lighter. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if that's okay too. Don't forget to drop a comment down below. Now, what do you think about all these scandals in the early 2000s? Anyone in particular your favorite? Any scandals I missed you feel deserve to be mentioned? And as always, if you're not already, please make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that post notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and I'll catch you all on the next one.